Good morning, party people, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not having a very good morning. I'm feeling a little under the weather. I just got back from about a week vacation in South Beach, and somewhere along the line, I caught the flu. I was really worried that it was COVID. I was had a lot of the old traditional COVID symptoms. My whole body hurt. I was coughing. Uh, throat was dry, a headache, all that. And uh, ended, I've tested twice now, and it's been negative both times. So I, I guess I'm in the clear there. But it doesn't stop the fact that I just still feel terrible. And then like everything I touched technology-wise this morning didn't work. I had to upgrade to a new version of my desktop OS, Sonoma, and then my audio capture thing didn't work, and I can't stream live on Twitch right now. I was like ready to throw something out the window, and I just said, okay, I'm in the perfect frame of mind to answer your questions. That's probably not true, but... I've got everything set up so I could record, so hey, why not? It's been a few days since I've been in here. Let's go take a look at your top voted question. So the top voted question is, not close enough, says, if you got a new production DBA job where you had to support one of the open source databases, how would you start learning that new technology? Number one, far and away, is your peers. There were people working at that company before you. Maybe they had the DBA job title, maybe they didn't. Maybe they were just just developers or sysadmins, but they were working around that system already. They are your best resource. They're the ones who can tell you what problems they've had in the past with it, what to look out for. And then you can start to gradually do task-based learning, Googling to solve the problems that you're facing. The other thing that I would say is you want to do regular lunch and learns with other DBAs on the team. If there are no DBAs on the team, that's when you go to management and say, all right, you hired me despite me knowing this. Now I have to learn it. I'm going to need to go to classes. Here are the classes that I found online. What can we do to get that started and get that scheduled so that you can go start attending training? Next up. I'm a potato asks, hi Brent, how would you configure SQL Server to survive frequent power outages? I wouldn't. There's nothing different that you can do there. You want to put in UPSs, uninterruptible power supplies. And I know you said in your note in here, we can't buy UPSs at this point. I would disagree. If you can't even buy battery backups for SQL Server, then that site isn't appropriate for SQL Server. And what you'd want to do is use something in the cloud instead. Because that way, whenever the whole site loses uh, power, then you would have lost network connectivity as well. But at least the database on some other end there is well taken care of. But if you can't even get power to the site, it's not a good spot for SQL Server. Next up, Stockburn asks, uh, Hi Brent, random message, but have you ever kept your place in Mexico? I used to love the turtle videos. No, I couldn't get my friends and family to come south of the border often enough. I thought by having a place in like a, a vacation destination like Cabo would encourage my friends and family to come down there, but people just didn't want to cross the border. And I, I talked to a lot of them, and I was like, okay, what if I was in a, in a place that was more, uh, or was inside the United States still? And then they were like, oh, yeah, sure, we would totally do road trips and things like that. Uh, so I ended up, also, I really missed cars, uh, and so I, I love collecting vintage sports cars. And you can't really do that in Mexico. The roads aren't great in, like, Cabo or Tulum, places like that. So I ended up selling that and moving back to the States. Uh, next up, Sam Gompers asks, what is your opinion of a 32-hour work week for corporate America? I don't think it's ever going to happen. It hasn't even happened uh, that much in more socialist-type countries uh, that really favor workers. Uh, so I think that the odds of it happening in a very capitalist-focused country like America, it just simply isn't going to happen. Now, now, that isn't to say that you couldn't get a job or negotiate with your manager to do a 32-hour work week, but like in terms of the wider country doing it, it's just simply not going to happen. Next up, Torbjorn asks, what are your pros and cons of using SQL Server to send customer-facing emails? Never, ever, ever do this. 
So SQL Server is really expensive per CPU core. It's really great at hosting data. It's not really great at doing in-depth mail troubleshooting. For example, why isn't my email making it to its destination, giving me nice clean audit trails of where it went along the way. What you really want to use is a, a mail service that's dedicated to that kind of thing. I am a huge fan of, fan of SendGrid personally, sendgrid.com. Uh, Amazon also has simple email services, SES. Uh, I, that, that's been a little bit more of a, a challenge for us to use, but SendGrid, I can't stay enough good, say enough good stuff about. Miles asks, hi Brent, we've got RCSI enabled on the database and no lock all over the place. Oh God, why would you do that? Because then you're purposely telling SQL Server, ignore the good versions in the version store and give me crappy data instead. Ugh. Continues, we also see a lot of schema stability locks and blocking happening. Okay, schema stability indicates that somebody's trying to change the table. Somebody's trying to do an alter on the table. Somebody's trying to do an index rebuild. Uh, something about changing the table structurally or rebuilding it or updating statistics. Uh, you said, could you please explain a scenario where no lock can be evil in any one of those above situations? Well, the simple problem here is that you're not solving any problems that RCSI didn't already solve for you. If you're waiting for schema stability locks, then it doesn't matter whether you're using no lock or RCSI. When someone's changing the table, everyone else has to stop. So you want to get to the root cause of why are people waiting on schema stability locks? Uh, next up, QEnt says, Brent, do you plan any changes on your mastering index tuning class in order to add column store indexes? No, because column store is kind of a niche uh, topic and it doesn't work well in most scenarios, I recorded a whole separate class called Fundamentals of Column Store. Check out Fundamentals of Column Store instead. Next up, Mr. SQL Seek says, how did your experience with Invisalign go? Great. I can't recommend it enough. It was absolutely fantastic. It says, how long did you use it? I want to say it was about six months. I don't remember offhand exactly. Might have been nine months, somewhere inside that neighborhood. And I love the results. I can't say enough good stuff about them. It was absolutely fantastic. Sure Man says, as a consultant, how do you protect yourself from finger pointing and blame for problems that occur after you leave? Oh, that's a great question because it runs into, I run into this all the time. I give as part of my clients deliverables, I give them an Excel spreadsheet that gives them the specific tasks that they need to do in order. And there's a column in there for who the task is assigned to. And it's the last thing that we go through is before I disconnect from a call, I say, okay, here's what needs to happen next in order. Here's the teams that it's assigned to. And I always assign to teams, even if there's only one person in the team, because it just feels a little bit better when instead of saying, you, I need you to go do this today. So I say, okay, everybody on the same page. Do you have any questions for me about the work that needs to be done or uh, how to accomplish it? Because I'll be glad to talk through it with you. If you're not comfortable with it, you can have me do the work and I'll bill you for it, or however you want to do it. Sometimes clients will come back and they'll say, Brent, things aren't any better. And I'll say, okay, send me over that homework spreadsheet and tell me which parts you checked off. Well, we, we didn't really do a lot of that. Okay, so... If you didn't do what you were told and things didn't get better, I wonder what the cause of that could be. And just having that clear homework just really makes it easy for everybody to be on the same page. Uh, next up, M. Cardona asks, can we look forward to any new online SQL Server training content from Brent Ozar in 2024? Yes, I'm actually in the midst of recording a brand new class. Um, I don't pre-announce topics or dates just because sometimes I've had to shift gears. I've gotten really deep into a topic and been like, okay, I need to reorganize this differently or put it out in a different way. Column Store Indexes is a great example of that. When I first thought it or thought of a 
uh, recording it. I was going to do a mastering column store class. It was three days long. But as I got into it, I really understood that I needed to break out a separate fundamentals piece first, because 90% of the time when someone comes to me and says they want to do column store indexes, column store isn't even the right fit to begin with. So that first one day class helps people understand whether it's a good fit or not. So I am definitely recording new stuff. I just don't pre-announce the exact topics or release dates. And then one more, haha, <laughs> the edge asks, what's the Venetian sphere like? Um, I haven't been to it yet. I am actually going in two weeks. Uh, even I have tickets to the U2 show at the Sphere. I'm super excited for it. Uh, but by the time I was able to get tickets, the first couple of weeks were already sold out. But very looking forward to that. So I'll stop there, and uh, hopefully y'all learned a little something there. I already feel like I'm in a little bit better mood just from talking at y'all. I was going to say talking to y'all, but I'm not live streaming, so I'm more like just yelling through the pixels of the interwebs. Now, I already feel a little bit better, and let's see if I can go conquer any of my computer problems. Thanks a lot, and I will see y'all on the next Office Hours. Adios.